Well, hi there. Uh, this is Dr. Dave Brunson. I'm the Senior Director uh, for Access, Diversity, and Inclusion at the American Dental Education Association. And I appreciate this opportunity to talk uh, very shortly with you about academic dentistry. Uh, I will be talking a little bit about uh, what academic dentistry is involved. And I'm going to be specific about a program that we have at IDEA that's called the Academic Dental Careers Fellowship Program, or ADCFP. So what I want to do today in this time, brief time that we have together is to sort of tell you my story, uh, to talk a little bit about academic dental careers, and then, like I say, talk about the Academic Dental Careers Fellowship Program. My story. Uh, I never imagined that I would be in academics when I started dental school at the uh, University of North Carolina uh, back in the early 60s. And uh, after graduation, I went right into private dental practice uh, because that's where I thought that it would be a good place uh, for uh, me to be. And so I was in private dental practice from 1971 to 1982. And during that time, I found uh, that on my days off, I really enjoyed going back to the University of North Carolina and teaching. So I actually taught part-time uh, on what I called my day off uh, each week. And I taught in the removable prosthodontic department at that time and just thoroughly enjoyed that. So I knew then that even though uh, I enjoyed private practice, I really enjoyed teaching too. So I, st I stayed in private practice to 1982. And in 1982, a position came available in the Department of Operative Dentistry at UNC. And I applied for it, and I got it. Uh, it was a position as an assistant dean, uh, excuse me, as an assistant professor. Uh, and I was in. That was in 1982, and as I uh, stayed with that, with my experience, uh, the reason I said assistant dean, at the end of my career, I became uh, an assistant dean for the pre-doctoral curriculum at North Carolina. I did admissions, student services, and the curriculum itself, and had just really a really fine time in uh, enjoying uh, academics and doing the things that were involved with that. Uh, the one piece that was difficult, though, uh, was that because I came from private practice, uh, I really did not have uh, any research experience that would make me uh, credible uh, for uh, being considered for promotion or tenure, and so I had to develop that. And I was very fortunate that with the department and joining that I joined, uh, they had a research program already in place. And so I uh, did that uh, piece on uh, uh, the research, uh, learning how to do that and learning how to be uh, part of a research project. And because of that, then I was able to develop the research arm of uh, my faculty position. It, it was not easy, but it took a lot of work, but it was something that I found out was very, very important. So I would say to all of you that are considering an academic position, uh, not all positions, as we'll talk about in a little bit, have a research uh, piece to it. But for promotion and tenure, for uh, what I feel is being good at uh, teaching, uh, both clinically and didactically, preclinical teaching, all those pieces that are possible in an academic career, uh, the research is very, very important. So get involved with that. And, and you can get involved with that while you're a dental student right now. I would highly recommend that. Well, I stayed uh, in that position, like I said, uh, I, in, I, in 1993 was when I became assistant dean. And uh, I stayed there uh, in that position until 2003 uh, when I uh, retired, uh, actually, from the dental school in 2003. I spent the 2004 year uh, commuting back and forth. After I, I retired, I moved uh, to the Washington, D.C. area. And I did spend that uh, 
2004 helping uh, people that were taking over my position to uh, to rotate into what they were doing. And so that worked out very, very well. So I commuted for one year. But then after 2004, I uh, pretty much uh, was in a retirement uh, mode. And then I was very, very fortunate. You know, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, but the American Dental Education Association uh, offered a position uh, for me. Uh, that uh, allowed me to uh, get involved with a couple of programs that have been really exciting. Uh, one is the Summer uh, Medical and Dental Education Program, SMDEP, which is a program uh, that's run by a, a grant from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation in co collaboration with the Association of American uh, Medical Colleges, where we help young people who come from backgrounds that may not have been as, van as advantaged as others uh, become uh, competitive to get into medical and dental school. And then uh, those that are very interested in serving in areas of need after they've completed their medical or dental education. So I run that program at IDEA. And then I run the Academic Dental Careers Fellowship Program, which we'll talk about in, in uh, just a little bit, that help uh, young people uh, in dental school and in allied dental programs uh, consider academic dentistry. So that's my story, uh, dental school to private practice to an academic position at a dental school and then retirement and then finally uh, working for the American Dental Education Association. So let's take just a little time uh, to talk about academic dental careers. Uh, and I'm sort of, you'll see the, on the slide the six topics that I want to spend just briefly a, a few minutes uh, talking about. Uh, how do you find positions? Well, uh, that's uh, something that uh, is not an easy thing to do. Uh, you heard me say that I uh, taught part-time uh, while I was in private practice. And I would highly recommend that uh, to uh, you, if, that if you're in private practice and, and still want to see what teaching is like, uh, volunteer or see if there are some part-time uh, positions available at a dental school near you. And that's a good way to sort of get a sense of, uh, is this something you really would like to do? Uh, it, it helps you find out if you're, if you're good at it. Um, you know, not all of us have had a lot of training in how to be an educator, but uh, this would be a way that you can do that. Uh, you can just go uh, to the dental school itself. Uh, that's what I did. I just went and, and said, uh, I'd like to teach part-time. Is there anything available? At that time, I was very interested in prosthodontics and endodontics. Uh, endodontics didn't have anything open, but prosthodontics did. and so. That's how I got my part-time position. Uh, you will find that if you go to the IDEA website, uh, that they have uh, on the IDEA website opportunities for academic positions. A lot of dental schools and dental programs will advertise through IDEA, through the uh, Journal of Dental Education or the Bulletin of Dental Education, which are two products that IDEA has, uh, positions that are available. And so you can look through uh, those uh, publications and those postings on the website and see if something might match up that uh, you would apply for. So uh, finding a position is not easy. It takes a little work, but uh, there is information out there that will help you with that. Uh, tenure track versus clinical track. Uh, you may have heard that at dental schools, uh, as a faculty member, uh, there, there are different uh, academic tracks that are available. Uh, now, there are a lot of school, dental schools that are uh, not traditional in nature. If it's a traditional dental school, they will have tenure track. And uh, a tenure track is a position that uh, if you achieve tenure, and usually it takes seven to ten years to do that, uh, then you have that position for as long as you want to have it. Uh, there is review that still goes on. 
but it's the it's the institution saying to you that you are a valuable faculty member and that uh, by give, granting you tenure, uh, we, as long as you would like to be here, we would like for you to be a faculty member. So there is a tenure track uh, part that goes with it. Most of the time that has a must have a research arm to it uh, because you must, uh, to achieve tenure, have a good track record at producing uh, uh, publications, uh, scholarly activities, those kind of things that would uh, demonstrate that uh, you have a very strong interest in improving uh, the curriculum and being involved with things that would help with that. The other track that's uh, mostly considered uh, is the clinical track. And in that track, that's mostly a, a teaching position uh, at a lot of dental schools that will uh, focus on uh, the preclinical side of course teaching and the clinical side itself. So your major responsibility uh, would be involved with teaching clinically. Uh, this is not a tenured type position. Uh, most of the time it is on contract. Uh, it, a, each institution does that differently. Uh, some institutions you would uh, some, or you would have a one-year contract uh, to be involved. Sometimes they're three years, sometimes they're five years. And on that, uh, there's not the expectation of doing the research, though I, as you heard me say before, I highly recommend that you consider uh, getting involved in research if that's offered at the institution that you might be involved with, because that's the best route uh, to really feel good about what you're teaching and uh, also the process of, of promotion. Most of the time if you go into a position at a dental school, you're going to go in at a level of either instructor or assistant professor if you're on the ten tenure track line. Uh, there is after the assistant profession level, there is the associate profess professor level and that you can be an associate professor on the tenure track or an associate clinical professor on the clinical track. And then, uh, then there's the professor level, which is the top level. Uh, and you, you have that on the tenure track or you can be a, a, a clinical professor uh, on, that, on the clinical track of, sign of that. So, uh, so all of those are ranks that are within the academic career and I know I haven't spent a lot of time on that, but since we have such a short time, I want to introduce you to it and, and you can go into more detail with that later. The one track that I haven't put up here is the research track and there are at certain uh, dental schools those that have a uh, mainly a research interest, a research track where the person would be more involved uh, with just doing their research, getting grants, uh, and teaching based upon the research they're doing. So that's another track that I don't have time to spend on but is available at some schools. So the way you find out about it is uh, if you go to a school's website, they'll, they'll have the information that uh, tells you about it or you can just talk to different people at the school and see uh, what's going on with that. Let's talk a few minutes about salary and benefits uh, because there is, I think, some misunderstanding uh, about uh, salaries and benefits and academics. Uh, we do know for sure that uh, people who are in private practice do have the potential uh, to make uh, more money than those that are in academics. Though I would say uh, in my experience from going from private practice into academics, uh, for a while there it was a, very, a little difficult because there definitely was less money involved with that. But by the time you stay for a while and the benefits that are provided by the institution, when you compare your benefits and your salary, after you're there for a while, you're you're doing quite well. You may not reach that magical high salary that you hear practitioners make, but with your benefits and with your salary and what you do, uh, I think you will feel, uh, or maybe another way I should put it, I have always felt very fairly compensated uh, for what I was doing uh, in academics and, and being able to enjoy the benefits of uh, what it is like. 
Uh, the nice part about being in the academic dentistry that I probably should have said earlier uh, is that you uh, have the ability to teach, you have the ability to uh, do some practice, you have the ability uh, to uh, go about uh, many, many things that give you such a very, very uh, day. So uh, I found academic dentistry to be very rewarding. Uh, you see next the dental faculty practice uh, at some institutions if you're going to be teaching in the clinics, uh, you know, to keep your hands uh, active and to keep uh, how you, your treatment options uh, active, they require you to be part of the dental faculty practice. At North Carolina, uh, you had to uh, provide 15% of your salary and that was done by spending a day or two, depending upon what your uh, appointment was, uh, in the faculty practice uh, treating patients uh, as part of uh, the experience there and uh, keeping uh, your, your hands involved in dentistry and, and uh, just keeping up to date. So uh, you will find not all schools have that. Some schools will have uh, allow you uh, they will assign you, say, three to four days a week to be at the school, and then the other uh, two, uh, one to two days, you could have your own practice uh, out in the, in the area of which uh, the institution is located. So that varies from school to school. Administration, uh, you heard me say that after uh, 10 years uh, being at the school, I, I moved into the administrative piece. Uh, I found that to uh, be very, very exciting, and uh, I found that uh, I was able, I thought, to uh, be, because of my private practice background, because of my teaching and research, uh, I found that, uh, especially since I was doing uh, recruitment and admissions and student services, I found that to be very, very rewarding. Uh, it did put a lot of pressure on being able to maintain uh, my clinical teaching piece and being involved in faculty practice. I had to cut back a number of hours in faculty practice uh, to allow uh, the time for me to be able to uh, be involved with the uh, uh, administrative part. So I had actually uh, cut my faculty practice down in half when I went into administration. So what's a typical faculty day? Uh, most of uh, the time you're going to spend uh, a good portion of your day in teaching, working with students. Uh, as I mentioned, if you're on tenure track, a certain number of hours will have to be dedicated uh, during that week uh, for your research. Uh, and you would have, uh, in most cases, and I did, have a uh, faculty practice commitment there. So generally, if you would look at percentages, uh, in a, a typical uh, faculty position on tenure track might be 20% uh, teaching, 40% uh, research. Uh, if you're in administration, that could be another 40%. So you see you're at 100% very, very rapidly there. Uh, and so all those percentages would vary. But like I say, for me, that was a very, very uh, rewarding experience uh, to be involved with uh, teaching and all the different things that being a faculty person uh, begins. Well, I know I've been very quick through this, but I hope I've given you some idea of uh, what it's like uh, finding in a faculty position and what positions are there and a little bit about the salaries. And I know I may have created some questions and uh, hopefully uh, those can be answered for you. I'd like to now slip very quickly into what is ADCFP, Academic Dental Careers Fellowship Program. It's a fellowship program that began in 2006 uh, with a startup grant from the ADA Foundation. Uh, it is administered and supported by IDEA and the American Association of Dental Research. Uh, in 2010, the IDEA Guys Foundation uh, came in and started the support. And in 2011, uh, Liaison International also uh, has supported the program. 
And this program uh, is to enhance the ability of dental students and allied dental students to enter academic dental careers. And that's just the overall goal of the program. Uh, there's a management group, uh, Dr. Rick Balakovic uh, from IDEA, Chris Fox from AADR, myself as the program director, and Dr. Carl Hayden, who's with the Academy for Academic Leadership, is in charge of the curriculum of the program. Uh, just to show you a few pictures of the classes, uh, just to give you an idea of the fellows and the mentors. This program, uh, the fellows are uh, dental students, the mentors are dental faculty. This is the 2006 class, the 2007 class. Uh, you may see uh, some mentor faces coming back up because the mentors find they really enjoy uh, doing this. So they do it more than one year. Uh, there's the 2010 class, uh, the 2011 uh, class, and then this is the largest class we had, uh, 2012, where we had 14 uh, fellows and mentors. We, the year, normal year is a 10 to 11, so we were a little bit larger uh, last year. And we have just now uh, started our application process for the 2013 and uh, we have 31 applicants uh, who are applying for the program. So we're really, real excited that the program is, is on its way and going. Uh, just to look, I know this is a busy slide, but just to get an idea of what it's like, uh, you, there are at the beginning training sessions that go on. Uh, this is at the IDEA annual session. Each year is when the fellowship starts. Uh, there are, during the year, four online sessions where we uh, work with the uh, specifics of being an academic uh, faculty member. Uh, we require bi-weekly me meetings between the fellow and the mentor. Uh, the fellow uh, does interview faculty and administrators, uh, and each year the fellows talk about this is the best part of the fellowship itself. Uh, you must participate in teaching in four different areas. Uh, that's uh, didactic teaching, clinical teaching, preclinical teaching, uh, and uh, being involved with uh, seminars and small group teaching. Uh, you write two career reflection essays just to sort of get an idea of how, it's, how you're feeling about academics. There is a research component. Uh, and you heard me say earlier how important research is to academics and to teaching. You will do a poster presentation at the next annual session, the 2012 group, and this is the components for the 2012. At the 2013 IDEA annual session in Seattle, we'll be presenting their uh, posters. You create during the fellowship year a portfolio. Uh, this is very important for faculty members in terms of the uh, promotion and tenure process, and then you participate in evaluation of the program itself. Uh, just to give you an idea of uh, what the schedule looks like, this is sort of a road map uh, for last year's group, and you can sort of, it sort of shows deadlines and what gets done each month. So the one thing that we keep hearing from, us, uh, from fellows that participate is they didn't realize how much uh, work uh, that uh, really is involved with it. As I mentioned, one of the top parts of the fellowship that the fellows re relate to us are the faculty interviews. Uh, we have required interviews that you talk with the faculty. And this, the reason for this is to find out what it's really like being a faculty member and, and the different pathways of getting into uh, a faculty position. So we want you to talk to assistant professors. You can see the list, part-time uh, professors, tenure track, clinical track. Uh, we want you to talk to or interview a chair of a department. Uh, we want you to interview the associate dean for academic affairs or clinical affairs as student affairs, and then most importantly, an interview with the dean of the school. And so uh, this gives you sort of uh, the way to go about it uh, in terms of finding out uh, uh, what it's like being a faculty member. Uh, there is an application. Uh, information is on the IDEA site. Uh, as I said, we've already accepted applications for next year. The deadline for that was December 13th. Uh, and so, uh, so it's over for this year as far as applying. 
Uh, the ones that are applied, they'll be notified in January of their success, and the fellowship will start in C the IDEA annual session exhibition in Seattle, Washington. Uh, so, I hope I've been able to give you some ideas about uh, academic dentistry. I will be available for the next 10 minutes, so if you have any specific questions, I'll try to answer them. I have put my contact information up on this slide, so if you would like to write it down, I love uh, talking uh, with uh, people about being interested in academics and certainly about the ADCFP uh, program itself. I will caution that um, I have reached a point in my uh, career that I am going to retire. So uh, my retirement date right now is February the 15th. So this, <laughs> this uh, uh, availability for talking with you and at this uh, point will be uh, February 15th. But I hope I can answer your questions. I hope you will give academic dentistry a strong uh, consideration. I certainly feel blessed that uh, I was able to do that, and uh, I, it's been very rewarding for me, and I know it will be for you if you consider going this way. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your interest, and I certainly hope to hear from you.